Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Better Than Beef Meatless Meatloaf. That's right, I might be missing a question mark. Since the title should probably be Better Than Beef, since you'll be the one that decides if that's true. But that aside, this is probably better environmentally and better nutritionally and definitely better on the budget. And most importantly, incredibly delicious. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by sauteing a whole bunch of sliced mushrooms in a generous amount of olive oil set over high heat. And as usual, we will add a nice big pinch of salt to this. And what we need to do here is cook these mushrooms very well until they are severely browned and have given up a significant amount of their moisture. And if you sauteed mushrooms before, you know that at first they turn kind of wet and they'll basically just start simmering in their own juices. But we just have to be a little bit patient because eventually that's going to evaporate out and these will start frying in that olive oil and they will eventually caramelize beautifully. And then speaking of evaporation, once things dry up and our mushrooms start taking on some nice color like this, that would be the perfect time to add our diced onions, which we will stir in. And while our mushrooms finish browning, those are going to soften and sweeten and they will basically melt right into the mushrooms. So we will take our time and let that cook. And while that's happening, we can also boil our lentils. And for that, all we'll need to do is bring some black lentils up to a simmer on medium-high heat. And as soon as those are simmering, we'll reduce our heat to medium-low. And we'll cook those for about 20 to 25 minutes, or until they're just tender. And by the way, any kind of lentil will work for this. But some are a little larger, it might take a little longer to get tender. But you'll know because you'll check and they'll be tender. So we'll let that simmer on medium-low, and we'll go back and check our mushrooms which have finally dried out and are browning up nicely. And once our pan's looking a little something like this, we can stop and add the next set of ingredients, which will include some diced celery, a little bit of tomato paste, and my secret ingredient, a couple teaspoons of beef base. Oh yeah, we're not making a vegetarian meatloaf. We're just trying to make a delicious one that doesn't contain a bunch of expensive actual beef. And what we'll do is stir all that together and saute this for about three minutes or so during which time that tomato paste is going to kind of toast to the bottom of the pan, which is exactly what we want. All right, that's going to give a deeper flavor and make everything taste a little meatier. And then once that's been accomplished, what we'll do is stir in a splash of water, and then we'll simply turn off the heat, and we'll let our mixture cool down a little bit before we grind it up in our food processor. And at this point, we'll go back and check our lentils. And for these small black ones, after about 20 to 25 minutes, they should be just about tender. And if they are, we'll go ahead and drain that. And then we'll simply let that sit and drain until needed, which is going to be very soon. Since what we'll do next is transfer our mushrooms into our food processor, along with exactly one cup of those drained lentils. And then we'll just pulse this on and off until we've achieved the exact texture we want. And if you don't have a food processor, it's fine. You can just dump this onto a big cutting board and just chop everything up with a knife until it's as fine as we need. And the texture I'm going for looks a little something like this. Okay, I want these chopped up fairly fine, but I don't want a puree. And as I transfer this into a mixing bowl, you're going to get a much better look. Oh, and as far as another good reason to make this, do a search on the health benefits of mushrooms, and I think you're going to be pretty impressed. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and add the rest of our ingredients, which will include two large beaten eggs, a couple tablespoons of soy sauce, and not the low-sodium kind. Okay, we need that sodium. We'll also do a couple teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, as well as some onion powder and some garlic powder, which are not to be mistaken for onion salt and garlic salt. Okay, don't use those. We will also want to toss in some freshly ground black pepper, some kosher salt, a little bit of dried oregano, and a little bit of dried thyme. And then, of course, a few shakes of cayenne just to stay in shape. And then we'll finish up with a couple squirts of ketchup, followed by what's going to bind this meatloaf together. And that would be some dried breadcrumbs, some rolled oats, which are the regular kind, not the instant. And then last but not least, some freshly grated Parmesan cheese. All right, the real stuff, Parmigiano Reggiano. And then we'll take a spatula and give this all a thorough mixing, which reminds me, I almost always use the microplane to grate the Parmesan. But for this, I actually use the finest side of a box grater, so they're a little bigger pieces. And that's just so it mixes in a little easier without clumping which can be a problem if you grate it super, super fine with the microplane. But anyway, like I said, let's go ahead and give that a good mix, at which point we'll transfer that into a generously buttered loaf pan. And I'm using this glass one, 
but a metal pan will also work. But either way, we'll transfer that in and pack it down firmly and smooth out the top, at which point we're going to wrap this in foil and then transfer it onto a sheet pan to catch any potential drips. And that's it. This is now ready to bake. Or if we want, we can refrigerate this overnight, which may or may not help develop more flavor. But either way, once we're ready to bake, we'll go ahead and transfer that into the center of a 375 degree oven for one hour. And while that cooks, we can move on to make a simple glaze, which for me is equal parts ketchup, mustard, and brown sugar. Or you could, if you want, use something different like a barbecue sauce. Or you can do this how my mom did and just use ketchup and brown sugar. I mean, you are after all the meatloaf of your meatloaf. And two out of three ain't bad. In fact, it's very good. And once that's mixed up, we'll simply set that aside. And we'll pretend by now an hour's gone by. And we'll pull our meatloaf out of the oven. And we'll remove the foil. And if everything goes according to plan, it should look like this. And be sort of firm to the touch. And then what we'll do is let this sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. To let it cool down a little bit. At which point we'll take that foil from the top and we'll place that on the pan. And then we will carefully, but very confidently, invert that meatloaf onto the foil. And then we'll take our glaze and spread it all over the surface. Okay, mostly concentrating on the top, but I think we also want to spread some on the sides as well. Oh, and please note, this was an experiment. And in hindsight, I really should have oiled the foil. And you're going to see why very shortly. And while we're glazing this, we should turn our oven up to 450. Because what we'll do once this is covered is we will pop it into the center of that nice hot oven and we'll let it cook at 450 for about 15 or 20 minutes or until our glaze is cooked on and looks like this. Oh yeah, that almost looks like meatloaf. And at this point I grabbed a couple spatulas so I could transfer this onto a cutting board. And it was right about here I realized we really should have oiled that foil. Since as you can see, some of that crust stuck to the bottom of the pan. But we never let the food win. So I pretended that didn't bother me, and I grabbed a knife to slice in, and I was extremely happy with how that went. Okay, a little bit crumbled off, but I think that might have been from the serrated knife. So I grabbed a quick sample, and it was amazing. But we'll get to the taste in a minute. The first thing I wanted to focus on was the texture, and what I was hoping for here was just to use enough binder to keep this together in one piece. Okay, it's called meat loaf, not meat gravel. But I didn't want so much binder that it was tough and rubbery and firm. All right, I want to get as close as I could to an actual melt-in-your-mouth meatloaf. And you know what? We got very, very close. All right, this was very tender and nice and moist. But having said that, there's no way to judge a meatloaf on a cutting board. All right, we have to put a couple slices next to some mashed potatoes and green beans. And we need to ladle over a very generous amount of our beef gravy, which of course we have a video for. Although I believe that recipe includes mushrooms which I didn't include here because they're in the meatloaf. But anyway, the point is you're going to want to serve this with some kind of gravy. And please do not forget about those mashed potatoes. So I served that up properly and I grabbed a fork and dug in. And as far as the taste goes, I don't think we're going to be able to fool anyone that this has beef in it. But it is in fact very savory and very meaty and very rich and satisfying. And I think checks all the boxes we want checked when we're eating meatloaf. And I think the secret is browning those mushrooms very severely, which really does give them a very intense meaty flavor. And even though they still retain a mushroom flavor, when we add in the umami from that soy and the Worcestershire and the Parmesan and the tomato paste and everything else we threw in here, I would say this is surprisingly close to a real meatloaf flavor. And yes, in a perfect world, the texture might be 10% less crumbly. Although having those mashed potatoes and gravy help wrangle it down to the fork does help. Speaking of which, let me spoon over a little more of that wrangling gravy. So maybe, possibly next time, I'll do a touch more breadcrumb. Like just a little more. Since I don't want to add a whole other egg in this. Which would be another way to tighten this up a bit. Or you know what, I might just leave it alone. Since the texture really was nice. And when's the last time you heard someone eat meatloaf say, I wish this was firmer and denser and more solid. So I think I'm okay with this slightly crumbly, but moist and tender texture. But anyway, that's it. What I'm calling better than beef, meatless meatloaf. Sorry, I meant better than beef, meatless meatloaf. Whether you do this to save some money, since beef prices are kind of crazy, or you want something that's maybe a little bit healthier, or you just decide to give the cows a break this time, 
right? No matter what your motivation, this was extremely delicious. And I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.